In this video, we are going to be solving multiple step linear equations. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at all the steps that are involved in solving an equation that has multiple steps. So whenever you have an equation that has fractions, the first thing that you want to do is clear the fractions or get rid of the denominators is another way to phrase it. So you want to do that as your first step. Once your equation doesn't have any fractions, your second step is to simplify both sides of the equation. Simplifying means distributing to remove the parentheses and then combining like terms. Once you get your left side and your right side of your equation cleaned up, then the third step is to get your x's or your variables together on the same side of the equal sign. So this is the step that will usually involve moving a term from one side of the equation to the other. The fourth step is to get the constants together on the opposite side of the equal sign. So you're trying to get them away from your variable term. Now three and four are kind of interchangeable. I just think it's important to do it the same way every time. I always move my x's together or get my x's together first. Some people choose to get their constants together first. It doesn't matter. I just think it's wise to always do the same thing every time. And the very last step in solving an equation is to divide by the coefficient of x. So the division will be your last step. So the first equation that we're going to solve is 7x plus 5 minus 2x is equal to 40. So I'm going to draw my line down my equal sign and I'm going to look to see what is the first step. I don't have fractions, I don't have parentheses to move, but on the left side of my equation I have some like terms that I can combine. I have a 7x and a negative 2x. They're on the same side of the equation, so I'm just going to combine the coefficients. A 7 and a negative 2, when I put those together, I get 5x plus 5 is equal to 40. Now it's time to get my constants together on the opposite side of the equation. So that means I need to move the positive 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides. Remember, we move or undo something by doing the opposite. So the opposite of a plus 5 is a minus 5. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. The 5 and the minus 5 zero out, which just leaves me with 5x is equal to 35. And then that very last step is to divide by the coefficient. So the coefficient of x is 5. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Well, 5 divided by 5 just leaves me with a 1x is equal to 35 divided by 5 is 7. So my solution is x is equal to 7. Number 2 is 30 is equal to 5 times 2t minus 3. So when I look at this equation, there's nothing to do on the left side, it's just one term. But on the right side, I need to remove parentheses, the parentheses by distributing the 5 to both terms. So 5 times 2t is 10t, and 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Now that I have my parentheses removed, it's time to once again get my constants together on the same side. So I need to get rid of that minus 15 that's with my variable term. So the opposite of a minus 15 is a plus 15. So I'm going to add 15 to both sides of my equation. The minus 15 and the plus 15 cancel each other out. And that leaves me with 10t on the right side, and then 30 plus 45 is 15. Now it's time to do that last step of dividing by the coefficient. So the coefficient of t is 10, so I'm going to divide both sides by 10. So that leaves me with t is equal to 45 over 10. 45 doesn't go into 10 
excuse me, 10 doesn't go into 45 evenly. So I'm going to just leave it as an improper fraction, but I want to reduce it. What is the biggest number that can go into 45 and 10? Well, that would be 5. So I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 5. When I divide 45 by 5, I get 9. And when I divide 10 by 5, I get 2. So I'm going to leave this as an improper fraction, meaning the numerator is larger than the denominator. And that's it. That's my solution, 9 over 2. Problem number 3 is x minus 3 times 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. All right, so again, you can see that there's nothing to do on that right side because I only have one term. But on the left side, I need to distribute. So I'm going to distribute the number that's in front of the parentheses, and I'm going to grab the sign. So I'm distributing a negative 3 to both of those terms. There's nothing to do with that x in front, so I'm just going to bring it down. And then I'm going to distribute negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. And negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Now I see that I have like terms that are on the left side of my equation, so I'm going to combine them. Remember there's an understood 1 in front of that x. So I'm putting together a 1 and a negative 6. And when I add those together, 1 minus 6 is a negative 5x minus 9 is equal to 11. Now once again, it's time to get those constants together on the other side of the equation. So I want to get rid of that minus 9, which means I'm going to be adding 9 to both sides of the equation. All right, when I, after I add 9 to both sides, I get left with negative 5x on the left side is equal to 20. All right, and now I'm going to divide by the coefficient. My coefficient is whatever is in front of x. So it's a negative 5, which means I need to divide by the negative as well. So I'm dividing both sides of my equation by negative 5. And a negative 5 divided by negative 5 leaves me with x is equal to 20 divided by negative 5 is a negative 4. So my solution is negative 4. And the last problem on this video is number 4. 5x minus 3 is equal to 2x plus 12. All right, so in this particular problem, there's no simplifying to do. We don't have any parentheses to get rid of. We don't have any like terms to combine. But we do have va variables or x's on both sides of the equation and constants on both sides of the equation. As I mentioned before, I like to move my x term first, or my variable term. And I typically move the smaller term to the side of the larger. You don't have to have your x on the left. That's okay if you have your x on the right. But because 2 is smaller than 5, I'm going to move the 2 to the other side. So I'm trying to get it to the other side, so that means I have to move up by doing the opposite sign. So it's a positive 2x, so to move it, I need to do a negative 2x. Right, that means my x's zero each other out on the right side. And then on the left side, I have 5x minus 2x is 3x minus 3 is equal to 12. Right now, I need to move that negative 3 to the opposite side. And remember, to move things, we do the opposite sign. So it's a negative 3, so to move it, I'll do a positive 3. Well, the minus 3 and the plus 3 cancel out, and we're left with 3x is equal to 15. And then it's that last step of dividing by our coefficient. Our coefficient is 3, so when we divide both sides by 3, we're left with x is equal to 5. So our solution is a positive 5.